myself because I did not know myself I did not know that I was a spirit and a part of Allah I did not recognize the the God that was within me I did not invoke the ideal of wanting for my brother what I wanted for myself or for my sister for that matter all praises are due to Allah for bringing us a prophet that sent to us a prophet in these United States of America because every nation is deserving of a prophet. Islam? Mm -hmm. Islam. I also would like to extend those honors to the forerunner, the harbinger, the honorable Marcus Ozai Garvey. Islam. He was a warner. He was sent to, he was sent to us by Allah to give us the concept of race and unity when we didn't have an idea how to unite after 1865. Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't have an idea on how to salvage and, 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 and develop ourselves as a collective, I want to be specific in saying as a collective because there were many attempts in many groups in small towns, etc., etc., after and during rather the Reconstruction period. Mm -hmm. But it was because of Marcus Mosiah Garvey that we know the concept or we begin to understand or familiarize ourselves with being united. If you will, I want to give honors to the Moorish American Standard. Red flag, five pointed green star in the center representing the highest principles known to man love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. There are many other names for love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, but I can guarantee you whether you are in these United States of America or you are in the country and the nation of Morocco those principles of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice still are relevant, are, are relevant and are still being demonstrated to the utmost of its capacity. Mm -hmm. Islam? Islam. I also want to acknowledge the United Mercantile Trading Banner, the flag of our residents. We are American citizens, without a doubt a contradiction, if you will. Mm -hmm. Our prophet returns to us our nationality, which is Moorish American. Key word, Moorish American. We are descendants of Moroccans and born in America. Therefore, this land is your land. This land is my land. This land is our land. Islam? Islam. I would like to give honors to all Moorish Americans, both past, present, and future, who strive to promote the interests, who strive to promote this holy and divine movement by way of the prophet's holy instructions and divine laws. I want to give honors to all organizations, all organizations who strive to promote the interests of all Asiatics, people of African descent born in America, and all indigenous peoples living in America as well. I want to give honors to the office of the Grand Governor, uh, who extends his Islams 
um, by way of Philadelphia, Temple 11, to each and every one of you. Uh, the Sheik staff, the Lieutenant Grand Governor, the Sheik staff, the admin staff, and the vanguards who keep the peace. I want to give honors to Temple Number 19, my home, um, the home as to which I was introduced to the Prophet. Um, Al Hakal, the temple. Mm -hmm. um, I want to give honors to all things more. And last, certainly, not least, I want to give honors to you, the hills and bays and the sacred grove, because when man honors man, he honors our Father God Allah. Uh, once again, all praises are due to Allah for having us here on another holy day meeting so we may continue to build together. Islam? Islam. Islam. I want to give um, honors and say gratitude to our brother Yosef Anfield Hill for a prolific and thoughtful measure on the importance of nationality and giving those examples of the importance of nationality and relations between other nations and us being, we being Moorish Americans, descendants of Moroccans born in America, how we interact with the land of our descent. Uh, if I may, real quick, to add on to his measure, um, he said a key word that that had me recall to memory a um, a book that I would encourage each and every one of you to um, to to purchase. Um, if not, I believe you can read it online as well. Uh, it's called Sultan Muhammad Ben Yosef's American Strategy in a Diploma of North African Liberation, 1943 through 61. Um, and the author, I'm going to butcher her name, or their name rather, is first name is spelled capital E G Y A, middle initial is N, and the last name is S A N G M U A H. So, um, you spell that last name? Again? Last name is S A N G M U A H. I believe it's a uh, it's an article, and it's from uh, the Journal of Contemporary History. But um, simply put, it just reiterates the significance of the relation between America and Morocco um, at the advent of the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. Um, I, I'm often reluctant to mention the Treaty of Peace and, and Friendship because um, we, some of us, not all of us, but some of us as Moorish Americans are not as astute to the, the relevancy and the context of the Treaty of Peace and Friendship and what it involves and what it consists of. Um, that is a measure for a, uh, another day and another platform. but. Um, when you study the treaty, and then you get contemporaries, contemporary writing into contemporary literature, where that where that treaty is being um, executed and demonstrated, if you will, you get a better idea of the purpose and what it stands for. Um, it is not a, um, a, a, a a MacGuffin, if you will, to the Moorish Americans' freedom. Um, it is simply a, a tool to aid us in international relations um, relative to who we are as American citizens born of Moroccan descent. Islam? Islam. Uh, another thing that I, I wanted to um, add on to my brother Yosef's uh, demonstration is the, uh, the uh, I wanted to reiterate, and that's actually going to be um, good portion of my measure is understanding what it means to be a Moorish American. Uh, understanding this Moorish divine and national movement. 
we say it, we recite it, do we know what it means? To, and to be, do we have a, a full understanding of it? And because of the time constraints, I can only give you a portion and encourage you to continue your studies and application of you know what I you know what I'm imparting on you today. Because to the brother's point about being missionaries, you know, to be a missionary, to be uh, to be that, you have to be who you know, or to be what you know rather. Um, our Lieutenant Nazir Ali Il says so eloquently, Moorish American is who you are, not what you do. So when we go out as missionaries for our Prophet Noble Drew Ali, we have to exhibit whether we have on our fez, whether we have on our turban, or we do not have those, those um, adornments on that we exhibit what it means to be a Moorish American. And the key to being a more uh, to being a Moorish American is to be an American citizen. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. The key to being a Moorish American is to be an American citizen. Mm -hmm. Islam? Islam. Islamism. So I want to open up with couple of articles that I'm going to read in part. Well, actually, I'm going to read one article as a whole and one in part, and then I'm going to read another article in part. Islam? Islam. I'm going to draw from first article in our Moorish literature, what should we call him? And then I'm going to go over to um, right below that divine warning. And then um, I'm going to reiterate uh, in part the voice of the prophet. Islam? Islam. All right. What shall we call him? So often our various journalists find trouble and selecting the proper name for the Moorish American. Some say Negro, the other will brand him race man, still another will call him Afro-American, and then come colored, dark, American, coon, shine, the brethren, and your folks. It is indeed a hard matter to find something suitable for the various occasions where a title needs to be used. Is it that these people have no proper name? That is a question. Did they have a national name when they when first brought to these shores in the early part of the 17th century? Mm. That is another question to pose. If so, what is it? Did not the land from which they were forced have a name? Now it now appears a good idea. For those, for, who, for those whose duty it is to write for the various journals to find out what the national name of the forefathers of these people was. Also look into the history of the founders of civilization and see who they were and where they stood in the building of present civilization. Probably two hours in an up-to-date library were served to relieve the strain on our men of letters. When the occasion presents itself for the title, itself for a, ti a, a title for these people by itself. So he says, two hours in an up-to-date library. How many of us, you don't have to raise your hand, just think to yourself, how many of us actually spent two hours in a library studying who you are? Because this was actually a plea to the journalists mm -hmm. to study about two hours. Mm -hmm when referring to these people who have been called everything under the sun except for who they are. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. So not only the question that is, arises, have, has the journalist spent at least two hours, but have you took the time to spend like two hours in the up to date? Mm -hmm. All right. 
the matter of the various names given to these 22 million people of all colors of every race of the globe was an act of European psychology. All right? European psychology can also be removed and filled in the slot of, um, uh, of, of, of um, white supremacy, if you will, or Western civilization. All right? Um, all of those is not a knock or to be agitating towards the European uh, peoples in the world. But what we are saying is that there is a, uh, an unbalance of ideologies that is being perpetuated internationally. That's wild. And there needs to be some checks and balances, mm -hmm. um, fair checks and balances, so that we can have a, a well-rounded society. Mm -hmm. All That's right? Wild. So the matter of this, and, and one of the examples of these acts of European psychology is that you have a group of people that is living on the shores of the America that do not know who they are. And some would even say it is a, uh, a, a program to continue that perpetuation or continue that narrative. They gave him a name, then defined it as something inferior to theirs. White. We're going to go back to that in a minute. They defined as a color of purity. Black, they say, represents everything evil. The Negro, as they were called in this nation, have no nation to which they might look with pride. Where is the Negro nation? All right. Where is the ancestors of the Negro? All right. As they were called in this nation, have no nation to which they might look with pride. The history starts with the close of the Civil War, or more properly, with his being forced to serve someone else. Thus, he is separated from the illustrious history of his forefathers who were the founders of the first civilization of the old world. This matter should be looked into with the hope of correcting it. All right? I haven't read that in a while, but I like to read it so as a reminder of really being culminated in this last sentence. This matter should be looked into with the hopes of correcting it. All right? It has been well over a hundred years of toiling to correct this issue, this Negro problem that has now manifested itself into the African American problem, the black problem. All right? Now I'm going to flip it on you all for a moment and ask a question. What is the difference in Negro or being a Negro, what is the difference in being a black person? What is the difference in being a African American? And what is the difference of being a Moorish American? I gave you, what, four? Four identities? What is the difference in those? What is it that, that Moorish Americans do that contrasts the African American or the so-called black person. What is the comparison? What is they, What is it that they do that they are like? Let's think about that for a moment. Um, and while we think about that, and while we ponder on that, I'm going to read something. Um, actually, I have another one. I have the other article to read too before I get into that part. So. Um, I want to go back. I'm going to go to the prophet, the voice of a prophet. I'm going to only read the first paragraph. If you have race pride and love your race, join the Moorish Science Temple of America and become a part of this divine movement. Then you will have the power to redeem your race because you will know who you are and your forefathers were. Because where there is unity, there is strength. Together we stand, divided we fall. 
what is the profits measure according to the doctrine of more science temple of America? Or what is the uh, what is the measure on power according to the doctrine of the more science temple of America? What is power? It's illusion. Okay. Expand. Well, here's an illusion that it comes about from you know the, using the will to direct force. Right. Um, however, we can use this will and we can use this force, this power to redeem our people. Right. Once we know who we are. Right. That's long. I want to um, sidebar and I want us to, again, start to shift our, our, our mindset in the realm of thinking as our forefathers. When we hear the term illusion, let's not think of it as something malicious. Mm -hmm. Indeed. All right? Because the illusion is, is just what it is. It's, it's, it's not in the thing, it's how to use it. Indeed. Right? So when the prophet is, you know, when the prophet is giving us the measure on power being an illusion, he's just saying that it's 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 finite. Mm -hmm. All right? And it's finite in the sense of how long we can maintain that for us. Mm -hmm. So if we if 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 we're able to to maintain that collective force, then we will forever demonstrate that power because something that's finite can have a a, a, a long run. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can have a very long run, you know. Um, case in point, European ideology, <laughs> European <laughs> psychology. <laughs> we all know that that force is an illusion, and we all know that that time is a, that the time when the time is appointed by law, that too will pay to pass away. All right. But getting back to this this idea of race, all right, race defined. I'm being specific. Race defined by the U.S. Census. It is a person's self-identification with one or more social groups. All right. Again, the U.S. Census Bureau defines race as a person's self-identification with one or more social groups. All right. And then he goes on by saying, by uh, defining what ethnicity is. Ethnicity determines whether a person is of a specific origin or not. For this reason, ethnicity is broken out into categories. All right. And we have so many categories. All right. Um, ethnicity is, in other words, a, uh, a, a social dialect, if you will. All right. I often use the, the de uh, I often use the example of Chinese Muslims. All right. They have, China, in, in China, you have ten different ethnicities. So you have ten different dialects, ten different um, demonstrations, if you will, of how the Chinese um, practice Al Islam. All right. The same thing with with of ethnicit ethnicities in America. All right. You're gonna have different ethnicities. It's, um, what's interesting about race and ethnicity is that they're sometimes intertwined. All right. So so when we talk about race, we're talking about the the identification of a group of people living in a said area. Right. Um, the key word is self-identification. So when we talk about this concept of being a Negro or a black person or even an African American, somewhere along the line, the Asiatic living in America agreed to this ideology. Mm. All right. What is important is that even this concept as a race still needs to be, still needs to have a set of forms and usages that relate them to who they are. Alright? As it stands, this is the current
different titles of nationality. And I asked you all this question, I asked the question a few minutes ago, what is the difference in said nationality? Do I not have my papers with me? Ah, here we go. All right, so the prophet said, we were given a name, and that name was opposite from the other name. All right, the name that the European gave themselves was white, which meant purity. All right. Now the question is: Is the European wrong when he talks about what it means to be white? Hmm. In describing, what is what is he saying? What is will you define the word white? That's one of our keys. White means purity. Purity, purity means God. God, God means ruler of the land. So again, I ask you: Is that is the European correct when he, you know, when he's given that definition of what it means to be white? Indeed. Okay. Yes, sir. It's long. Um, I was. What my caveat was um, was when that when when he goes about describing himself. Right. I don't gel with that. I don't. I don't feel like that's accurate. Okay. At, at that point. Let me ask you this. All right. Does not a man or a group of people have the right to consider themselves pure? Sure. <laughs> I mean, no matter. How but see this, this. But see this is okay. So this is this is where what I'm speaking of when we when we talk about social relations and and understanding nationality and race relative to where we live, the climate in which we live. Like there there, there can't be any bias because we. Are we not saying that we're pure? The prophet calls us a clean and pure nation, does he not? Indeed. All right. So every so you know every every living being, every person that considers themselves part of humanity, if they will, if you will, has a right to to consider themselves pure. Now, the breakdown, to your point, is where it becomes at the expense of others. All right. No nation has the right to oppress another nation or another group of people. And then you, you, that that is the that is the breakdown. All right. It's hard. And we know this because our prophet mentions this in chapter. Chapter 47. All right. According to all true in divine records of the human race, there's no Negro, black, or colored race attached to the human family. All right? Because all inhabitants of Africa were and are of the human race. So if you are of the human race, you there is no Negro, black, and colored. That's right. All right? Then he goes on by saying, there is no one who is able to change man. We are on verse 11 or instruction 11. There is no one who is able to change man from the descent nature of his forefathers. Mm -hmm. Unless his power extends beyond the great universal creator, Allah himself. To your point, brother Akil. All right? That is the breakdown. But going back to our status in America. Because we're not... We're not classified by nations officially in America. We're classified by race, right? All right, so white. White is defined according to the U.S. Census. And also, when you get a chance, um, just again, to get a better understanding of how um, these things are being processed, look up Office of Management and Budget, OMB. Um, that is the... I wouldn't say the nucleus, but, but one of the the primary institutions within the U.S. Census Bureau that you know that processes information and distributes it out and gives that information based on what is being received. But it reads that white is a person having origins in any of the original peoples of Europe, the Middle East, or North Africa. <laughs> Again, a white person is someone, or uh, the white race classification is a person having origins in any of the in, uh, in any of the original peoples of Europe, the Middle East, 
or North Africa. Wow. Okay? Is there an issue with that? Absolutely. What's the issue? He said the original peoples right. of North Africa, the Middle East, and the European countries, that they're not the original peoples of those places. Okay, all right. Anybody else? As well. Yes, sir. <clears throat> the issue that I, I see with it is that someone of Moorish descent would look at that and, and not mark that box. Okay. Um, because, you know, the prophet said that we are a clean and pure nation. Mm -hmm. And that the, um, you know, Act 6, it mm -hmm. talks about uh, the Moorish Americans being the, um, you know, inhabitants of, um, of, of you know, North Northwestern Africa, and, and Southwestern South shores of Africa. Yeah, so the issue to me is that, um, you know, European psychology would cause us to look at that as someone else just mm -hmm. because it says white. Okay. All right. System. Um, now we get into the definition of black or African American. Mm -hmm. Alright? Um, again, according to our catechism, according to our doctrine, black according to science means what? Death. Death. Alright. As it states, the black or African American citizen, if you will, is a person having origins in any of the black racial, which is another interesting concept, racial groups of Africa. Let me read that again. Black or African American is a person having origins in any of the black racial groups in Africa. Then I'm gonna go back and read the dead racial white person having origins in any of the original peoples of Europe, the Middle East, or North Africa. All right. So when you hear the term black, what is it that comes to mind? Okay. So Moorish American is the olive tone woolly the wavy hair, right? Yes. All right. So, essentially, idealistically, depending on what your ancestry is, one would be compelled who is a member of the Moorish Science Temple of America, or consider themselves more, if you will, will be compelled, depending on where they're from, to check one of these definitions right because there's some moors that may have ancestry in North America in North Africa I apologize mm -hmm. now wait a minute we can also if we want to be a little bit more thorough we can say that these people are saying that they have European descent, but they may have, or European ancestry, if you will, and may have descent from the Middle East or North Africa. It may be based on complexion. If we want to play semantics, if you want to play the semantic game, you know. Um, but what stood out for me when we determined the word or when we defined the term black or African American is that it's a person of having origins of any other black racial groups in, in Africa. So that can also include North Africa. That can also include the Middle East. Islam. That can also include Europe. Islam. That's right. So do we see the, the breakdown? All right, and I want to reiterate what the prophet said you know, this matter should be looked into with the hopes of correcting it. All right? So, what I want to, uh, so, why I'm being methodical and why I'm taking my time with this essentially is to get you all to think. 
with all due respect to everyone. You know, teach it to the wise for them, for thine own improvement. Because if we were to continue to go down in these definitions, they get they become more and more ambiguous. All right. But again, therein lies the, the problem with race because what is being defined as race in here is actually an ethnicity because we're all Americans. But there's, there's different cultural dialects within America. So us being a, a, a Moorish American our prophet is, he's specifying, if you will, the ethnicity of our origin. Do you understand what I'm saying? Indeed. Mm. All right. But here is the thing that I want you to ponder, is that based off the question that I, that I asked you earlier, what is the, what is the, is there any differences are there any contrasts or comparisons to the quote unquote African or black American versus the Moorish American? What is it that we may do different? Let's name the things that we may do different that we may do different. Dress different? Do we dress different? Fezes, turbans, different customs. Alright, so we got fezes and turbans. Alright. So outside of that, what else do we do? That's different. Um, many of us, um, you know, many of our brothers and sisters, you know, the prophet said, um, uh, some of my good lords are still in the church. You know, mm. a lot of them go to church on Sundays and are in the church, in Christians. Okay. Many of us. So okay. We, you know, do that differently. That's uh, one of the main things, being that, you know, we're in a religious uh, organization. Okay. Different uh, diet. More, different. More do we have a different diet? Because yeah. most black, because you got some people that call themselves black to African Americans that have a pretty decent diet now. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. What else? What is it that we do different? Let's let's remove let's remove the wearing of the cultural garbs, the fezes and turbans. Let's what else? So we that's a given. But then you have some that are matter of fact, we, we do have some quote unquote African and black Americans that wear fezes and turbans. Depending on the circles. This one I would say, um, the principles and, um, and standards that we that we stand on, it would be the biggest difference between the Moorish American and whomever else, the Black American. Uh, Is it? XYZ. They may not know how many. So you you're saying that some of you, but because the the, the Moorish brother just said it, our brother Yosef, he said some of my good Moors is in the church. Indeed. So you're saying that the Moorish Americans are the only group of people that practice love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, and particular principles. I'm saying by and large, we are, there are some, <laughs> <laughs> yes sir, uh, just to add another one, um, okay. uh, those of us who know that we are Moorish Americans, mm. um, okay, that know we are Moorish Americans, go ahead brother. We, we follow our prophet. Um, well, most of us, we should be following our prophet. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I, many times, uh, you know, brothers and sisters are coming to the movement with an idea mm -hmm. and, um, you know, follow that ideal instead of following the prophet's ideals. And, you know, it, we have to go through that learning process, but we're supposed to be following our prophet and walking as our prophet walked. Okay. So now the question is, what are, what are our prophet's ideals? Um, still talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Besides our principles that our brother uh, elaborated on, okay. um, um, okay. Let me ask you this. So, let's let's say for the sake of argument, we all have an idea of what these principles are. Right. Okay. Are these principles exclusive to the institution of more science temple? No. Ain't no way. Okay. No. And I, I would like to add on the biggest difference I think is the way we worship and acknowledge our Creator. Because no, as far as I know, other group 
practices Islamism the way we do. So that would be the distinction in the way we practice and acknowledge our Creator. And as far as the other major difference should be in how we engage in the political process. How do, I'm gonna get you brother, how do we, so how do we practice our Islamism? Well, in, in the sense of how we pray, standing up, um, okay. just some of the customs that we do, in the way in which we teach, in the way in which we acknowledge, and the way in which we view, quote unquote, Allah or our Creator is different than other so-called Muslims, other groups of so-called black Americans. They just have a different view, ideology, and way in which they acknowledge their Creator. Have you ever heard of uh, Baha'ism? I have heard of it. Um, I'm not very familiar with it. I know, I believe there are some similarities to us, but okay. it's not exactly as we do it. Either. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm going to get you. Okay. But our brother Raphael, he did have a, a measure. Uh, I rise and offer you to allow highest one of the students to divine prophet. Would you want to leave? Just wrong. Um, he, he just said it. Um, talked about the, the customs, you know, the, the, um, the, way we, the way we practice different is by you know the rituals, the customs, the things that we do outwardly. However, the, the internal meaning of those things are, are you know in many ways identical, identical to you know many other groups. You know, I, it reminds me of um, it was the last week or two weeks ago we were invited to the house of prayer, mm -hmm. and you know when you watch how they demonstrate you know um, their their degree of um, you know Christianity, it is like. It, it, it literally brings the, the writings of the prophet to life. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, when you think about um, uh, uh, you know the customs and the, the, the traditions and you know all of these things. You saw it all being demonstrated. You know, in that church, and these are people who call themselves Christian, right? And you know, they're so when we talk, you know, when Brother Yosef mentioned, you know, following our prophet, right? You know, many groups follow our prophet, but they don't call him prophet of the We recognize that all prophets are one. Right. You know the spirit of a prophet is one is one spirit, right. and so you know when, when all these you know different groups they were you know they refer to their prophet by a different name. Oftentimes in thought we, we, we disconnect ourselves from those groups because of the name, you know, or when a, when a you know when a group calls their god by a different name, you know, in thought we disconnect ourselves because we don't identify with that particular name, but we know that Allah you know is is known by many names, you know, every nation see Allah, Allah not alike, you know, but it's still talking about that one. That one uh, causeless cause root is root from which all things spring forth. So you know, when, when we can when we can move beyond the, the the customs, the rituals, the names, and recognize the principles behind what's being practiced, you know, we can recognize that there is unity in that. You know, we can come. You know, we can meet people where they are based on you know the the principles that they live by. You know, many different groups live by love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. They just don't call it that. You know what I'm saying? So we have to be able to recognize and move beyond the names and you know the outward show and, and see the spirit within you know within behind what's being practiced so demonstrate this love <laughs> so i want to give gratitude to our, our sheep brother Raphael <laughs> for for taking my whole measure <laughs> right there and there um because that i mean he said it verbatim everything that i and i kid you not the, the spirit of the elohim is present because everything that he just said from chapter 10 on to, you know, to, to removing those barriers is essentially what I was gonna close out with because it's no need, you know, it's, it's going on 9.30. But when we, you know, to your point, Brother Joseph, when we go out and we minister to these people, you know, essentially we have to, we have to meet them where, we are, where they are and we have to, we have to build on the commonalities. Mm -hmm. Like there's no, like, so it's essentially, set apart from customs only thing that we're doing is we're, is we're switching black and African American with Moorish American that's that's what we're doing that's that's what our prophet is is is, is compelling us to do all right our prophet is saying that look this this construct this social construct of being black it has no it, it holds no water because you can't trace it back so you can't, you don't have no value in it. But if you're being Moorish American, that's where that divine and national movement comes in. Because each and every, each and every American with their ethnicity and, and, and race background, they can trace themselves 
to what their forefathers say at the beginning of time. But if we look at the black or the African American, we can't. The prophet said himself, we can only trace it back to the beginning when, when slavery ended or the point to where we were still under servitude to someone else. Mm -hmm. And that was, the, that was the beauty of the most honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey because he was saying, up you mighty race. Right. He was saying, you, you, you do not need to be dependent upon any other race. That's, and that's another thing that I want to highlight, and if I can only get a few minutes of your time, is that to, to, be, to, be, to be truly free is to be self-sufficient. And I don't want to say anything that that, that may be that, that may be alluding to 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 um to to any form of communism, if you will. But when when we talk about when we talk about um, Fidel Castro, when we talk about uh, uh, Putin and and um, and um, what's the Gorbachev? You know, right? Flashback, right? <laughs> When we talk about when, when we talk about those those three and even China, if you will, those, mm. the, the 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 their goal is to be self sufficient, but they realize that they can only be self sufficient by way of import and export. So that's why, if we were to bring it back to the condition of society today, that's why there's an uproar for these for these tariffs yeah. mm. because you're you're because you're messing with their money. That's right. You're messing with their 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 self sufficiency. Mm. You know what I'm saying, and for and, you know, and for him, to, and, and if and, and Allah forbid that our current president gets backing from the majority to where it's a cancel culture for for China, it's a cancel culture for North Korea, it's a cancel culture for Iran, because that again that this this concept of receiving and conferring reciprocal helps and mutual obligations amongst each other, that's important. That's what we as Moorish Americans we strive to do. You know, but again, we can't we can't even begin to do that without first recognizing that we, there is power within the collective, and that power itself lies within the importance of the name. Because as long as you can take that name and you can't and you can't trace it back to the Father God Allah, then all of this all of this 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 tearing and the struggling will be for naught. Mm -hmm. Because how how do you how are you recognize how 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 is it that the nations can can trace your existence to the Creator? Because right now you, you're operating outside the existence of the Creator. Because you're constantly referring to yourself as something that's that's finite. You know, that's an illusion. The Negro is an illusion. The African American is an illusion. There's no, you know, um, you have other people coming from Africa. They 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 turn their face when they have to check African American. They turn their face when, you know, they, they, and, and they actually, they petition to be considered white. That's right. And they don't do it to, to renounce their culture, who they are, but they know the importance of that, of that status. That's right. So once again, I implore you that what our prophet said is that we, we have to look into this matter with the, with the, in hopes of correcting it, you know, but it can't be at the expense of those that have, that have, that have built themselves on 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 the structure of African American, we have to show them that that being African American and Moorish American is one is the same, is one and the same. We have to we have to show them we have to we have to remind them that that hip hop music is Moorish. That's right. We have to remind them that dressing fly is Moorish. That's we have right. to remind them that that a family collective is Moorish. Mm -hmm. We have to remind them that 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 Islamism is a, a ubiquitous form of spirituality. That that is not is is it's not exclusive to the degree of Muhammad. All right, that is mo that that is another thing that's important. You know, that's why we have these unity summits. We have these unity summits to 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 not necessarily leave to leave the differences at the door. Because even with us coming with our own customs and traditions and beliefs, we have to find as a puzzle piece that right fit. Because our, our usages, forms, and customs and conditions, it may be useful in that on a particular platform, but it can't dominate 
and 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 uh, it can't dominate the particular group, and we can't remove ourselves from that group because it's not dominant, right. or from it because that you, you're killing yourself. So again, honest to the chief brother Raphael for, for taking my measure, and um, as long can I, can I add one thing. Sure. As long. Um, so. Uh, this was very profound um, what the prophet said in that two hours in an up-to-date library right. um, you know would give you the information and I just wanted to bring your attention to a, um, a article or a paper written by a college professor mm -hmm. named Scott J. Varda, a suspected racist. Mm -hmm. uh, the name of the uh, paper is called Drew Ali in the Moorish Science Temple of America, a minor rhetoric of black nationalism. Okay. And he basically reports that Noble Drew Ali created this fake identity so that black people could pass as foreigners. Mm -hmm. So he's basically postulating that we are black people, mm -hmm. but Drew Ali made up this whole thing so that we can pass for foreigners so that we wouldn't be mistreated because there were instances of Moorish Americans dressed in Moorish garb being able to go into so-called restaurants and places where so-called Negroes, Blacks, and Colors weren't allowed to go. So he purports that this was some scheme that Noble Drowley came up with. But the one thing that he never addressed was, if we're not Moorish Americans, who are we? Right. And the fact that Noble Drowley said two hours in an up-to-date library, Absolutely. a college professor with a PhD, you would think would have enough sense to say, all right, you guys aren't Moorish Americans, but this is who you really are. Right. He doesn't postulate that. He simply says you are really black people right. who are trying to pass as these foreign people so right. that you won't be mistreated. And pretty much ran the profit in the mud. But I wanted to just throw that out there. Anybody can go. I think it's on edu. It's like a website where college professors can post papers and stuff. But um, again, his name is Scott J. Vard. I forget which which college he's a professor at. Right. But um, I, I want to say Kansas. just based on the the, the reading of it, I, I would suspect he, he is a racist based on, on what I read. And and granted that that that, that may be a very that that that's probably a very strong theory. Let's let's think about this. Anyone that anyone that comes in that's looking to tear down the structure of classification in America. That is an enemy to the ideal, mm -hmm. because people are thriving from the classification of white, black, or African American. Mm -hmm. You know, and there there are other peoples. You know, again, that's where the ethnicity comes in. Where people that speak other languages that come from different lands, they benefit from the top the concept of white. All right, so. In order for us to, they're, they're going to be detractors, all right. And the the best way to, to the best way to cease a detractor is to build, right. you know, because it, you know there there's so many there's detractors from the from the narrative of, of Jewish people. There's detractors from from all different groups. I mean, but but that's you know that's what the dichotomy is you know you have two selves you have the higher self and the lower self you have truth and falsehood so there's always going to in the midst of truth you're going to have falsehood in the midst of falsehood you're going to have truth um and they're going to be ones that are going to um they're going to question the prophet but then as you know as the as the as, as the day star from on high said who demands a test mm -hmm. you know so we um we have to remain diligent in our goal and that's why you know I'm taking the time to just share that um, to share this portion with you because if if we are not diligent if we are not uh, adhering to you know what our brother Yosef said in regards to being a missionary you know you don't necessarily have to be a quote unquote great missionary or an, you know an evangelist in the sense where you're bringing in people by the droves that would be nice but if you bring in just one person if you bring in one person and they at least get to hear about a na their nationality, you know, so we can demonstrate our prophet in the flesh being a warner to to warn the people of and, and to reconcile it so they can at least know who they are, you know, because before that they may not know who they are. Again, we got people rolling. We got people. The the the, the brother at the door, um, honest to him, 
uh, Khaled uh, Mujahid Bey, um, and I had a conversation about you know Sunni Islam, you know, but but Sunni Islam, you know, that is a that's a derivative of Moorish Islam. But they, but again, they don't identify with that. So it's it's our responsibility to to have to familiarize them with it because they don't think that they were they were afforded a prophet. They got to look outside of themselves for their own salvation. But anytime you have to go outside of yourself for for salvation, that is an exercise in futility. You know, you you set yourself up for failure because you don't see that within you. You know, so. Um, that's that's my measure, you know. Again, boys, we you know we have to we have to be smart about this. We have to be masterminds when it comes to promoting our profit in this Moorish divine and national movement, and you know, and and being mindful of genuinely what it is. We're not the only thing we're looking to replace is this social construct that's putting us behind the ball. You know, um, and as long as we continue to, and, and that's what we have to push for. We can't make it seem like we're something outside of the social construct of a thing. That's you know, that's another point that I wanted to make before I, you know, before I lower the meeting. We're not outside of this con. We're not outside the social construct. And our prophet makes it a point to assure us that we're not outside the social social construct because we he's he's calling us American citizens. So even if we're Considerably on the low end spectrum, and we and we're getting the you know we're getting the, the low end of the stick. We have to we have to strive to to, to put our hands. You ever play baseball before? And whoever team goes first, we gotta you know what I'm saying. That's that's what we have to do. But you know again, we can't say it enough. We gotta do it together. You know, the 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 the, the Moorish the the Moorish divine and national movement as a collective is demonstrating principles of separatism. Mm. You know, so what what we gotta do about that? Charity, charity starts at home. Does it not? So we gotta get ourselves in order. We gotta get together with with these uh, with, with Moorish American leaders, at least regionally, at least statewide, wow. and come up with an agenda. Wow. So you, again, you have to leave the differences that you're doing. And say, okay, what is the underlying theme? Changing the social construct. Even if you change the social construct within your city, if there's so many more shine temples of America in the city of Atlanta, we should at least be looking at changing the social construct within the city of Atlanta. That's right. And then maybe let's look outside. Okay, we got, okay, we done did what we needed to do as a collective in Atlanta, Georgia. What we got in Athens? What we got in Nathan? What we got in Macon, right? You know, we got to, it has to, it's, it's always going to be a slow start. Things don't happen overnight. Uh, him it wasn't built in the day. I'm not going to say wrong. I already said wrong. We're not going to say it. Kemet wasn't built in the day. You know. Um, so that's, you know, that's something to ponder more. You know, when we interact with different Moorish Americans that have different customs, what we, what we going to say with them? Oh, that, that's not the true more. No. Not at all. Not at all. We all exhibit different parts of Allah. From you, brother, exhibiting the unk, because we know that our brother, no, our good brother Noble Jurali was the Egyptian Adept student. Mm -hmm. All right, to the Canaanite demonstration, mm -hmm. you know, to the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa demonstrations. Right. We all have the spirit and the part of Allah within us, you know. So that's you know that's why I am with the, with, with that measure more. So we gotta we have to contemplate that frame. We have to we have to understand what our purpose is and, and realign our purpose. You know, press hands with your brother. You know, again, be be grateful for the breath and realize that each and every one of us is, is, is taking the breath and that in itself is a blessing. And we should be looking to, to you know, to make sure that each and every one of us can, can get our portion of the kingdom of heaven. All right, so we got any more add-ons, anything like that? Any other questions? Just Lamadi, all as well. You want to lower the meeting for us? Yeah, go ahead. Come on. Let's do it. It'll be fun. That's it. <laughs> it is a family. Um, again, um, I want to also say 
thank you for coming out this evening. Um, I cannot stress enough the importance of attending your meetings. To attend your meetings will alleviate or at least get the ball rolling on any other questions that you have. This institution of the Morris Science Temple of America is it cannot be actualized virtually. Mm -hmm. Cannot be actualized, you know, just by coming once a month. It can't be actualized by just reading the Morris Holy Quran. It has to be actualized when you engage with people of like minds. Islam? Islam. So attend your meetings, Morris, and you know, and learn and, and, and read let's reason together. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm not saying that to be you know, just because it sounds good, it sounds cold blooded. We have to learn how to reason together because a lot of us we've lost how to do that. You know, so that's the important part of of the unity there. So Allah Akbar Ayana Salah Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Ayana Salah